please give it up for Gail of a bit. All right. Thank you. So I know it's the last talk of the day, but uh, are you all ready for about three hours of CSS? Yes. yes. OK. <laughs> all right. No, uh, seriously, um, I have way too many slides. I'm sorry. But um, I couldn't resist uh, putting a lot of, lot of links to resources or uh, talks I saw recently. Uh, to just throw them all in the slides. So if, if anybody is interested, uh, they'll probably be online somewhere after this talk and you can uh, go through them manually and um, try all the other stuff out. Um, so, yeah, learn CSS deeply. I thought it was kind of appropriate since a couple of years. I um, think it's the first uh, talk with this title. If not, I'm sorry. Um, about me, uh, I'm Vera. I work quite a while with uh, WordPress uh, now. I think since yeah, 15 years or something, tinkered with HTML the first time in late 90s. So I know the font uh, tag, Flash, and I've used a lot of importance in my life. Um, but why talk about CSS? Why now? Why have a talk at a WordCamp about CSS? Well. These are really exciting times. Um, CSS is evolving uh, at light speed, um, really, really rapidly. And we kind of need it to. Um, but also, sometimes CSS feels a little bit like an afterthought. I don't know why, because when I check um, just any regular website and I turn off JavaScript, and then I turn off CSS, and then I really don't get it, it's, it's like kind of a huge big thing, like everything outputted in the content, like how we uh, consume the web, kind of important, not really an afterthought. And another example, um, just another Dutch uh, website, I thought um, the name was quite appropriate, just a beautiful designed website, um, no JavaScript, no CSS. But why talk about CSS now at the WordCamp? Like in the past year, past years maybe, um, sometimes it felt like there wasn't that much love for CSS um, in maybe all the Gutenberg discussions or like full site editing. It's really kind of important. You see it everywhere, it's embedded everywhere. But how are we supposed to handle it? Uh, what are the new best practices? It was kind of a limbo because I was working trying to find my way with how can I Cope, how can I deal with the editor? I'm really kind of a big fan because I really think a uh, component based editor uh, for the open web is like a huge, a big deal, and we kind of need it. Um, but then you see, like, okay, I made my first uh, team. Uh, I used block editor for it. Everything is like really native HTML, uh, sorry, native WordPress as intended. And then, oh, uh, the HTML output is changing. Kind of a problem, kind of things broke because, yeah, I used GrooBlock to align some stuff in it. I used Flexbox. But when they add an inner container, it breaks. Actually, we really needed that inner container, but it wasn't in there in the first time, uh, first time around. So there were already a lot of websites going live with, other H with changing HTML yet again. Um, two years later, I guess, um, cover block to totally refactored. Might, you might have had, uh, might have encountered some issues with it. Uh, but then some more, changing classes. Why would you change class names? I mean, changing from the top one, WP block buttons. I thought it was something I could count on. Um, is content justification center? Yeah. Sounds uh, reasonable to me to use it and to keep use it, using it. And then suddenly, I'm a bit lost. Uh, I forgot, was it 5.8 or 5.9? In the core release, they just disappeared. And they went to something like uh, gibberish, uh, because the block editor was uh, outputting all the um, CSS dynamically. It's like a really cool thing to do. 
But then again, I wrote some custom CSS on top of it because I thought I could count on the East Content Justification Center and really a lot of other classes, they just disappeared. So okay, the WP block buttons, it stayed, but all the modification classes, they were gone. Um, I wasn't the only one having that struggle. Um, you saw things like this on uh, GitHub. Uh, is it really a constant fight? Uh, backwards compatibility was such a big promise in WordPress. It's really one of the main reasons I, I stuck with WordPress for such a long time. And now I get it if, if we're in such, um, uh, yeah, we're, it's changing heavily. I get it and we need it to change maybe, but if I can't count on the backwards compatibility, then maybe I have a bit of a problem. Can I still create with WordPress whatever I want to create, just like I used to do? Um, and then I encountered like this one, I think, yeah, February, and I was like, oh my God, now I'm lost. If you have quotes like, in general, it should be up to Gutenberg to add all the CSS for these things. We aim to absorb all the team CSS via team JSON. JSON. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's possible, but I don't really see it. I, um, I'm used to having a lot more fun with CSS and like nitty gritty and stuff. Can we really put it all into a JSON file and then not have all the WordPress websites just look alike. Okay, I have to admit, little disclaimer, there was a lot of rumble in the jungle um, the past year, especially with the 5.8, 5.9 stuff. But um, like Mark Ruth Wiley, he wrote a blog post, a call out for, okay, we need a standardized system. We need an API we can count on not like classes we weren't intended to um, count on. Um, we need a team contract. How can we build upon it? Uh, what can we trust? What might change in the near future? So a lot of people are talking about it. I was like, okay, this is curious. It's going, I'm only a small um, web developer. I, I, um, I'm having a hard time keeping really track with all of this, it's so much discussion, so many GitHub tickets, so much ch things changing. But it's getting to be, uh, it's going to be quite some interesting times. And I really love this discussion is going on. Maybe all, we need all the attention we can get. Um, another disclaimer was like, maybe if we're in such a, in the midst of a transition this big, maybe it's kind of normal that sometimes we feel lost because we're still all looking for the new best practices. We haven't f settled on them yet. We're still in the midst of the discussion maybe. So I was like, okay, I'm with all those questions, um, a bit of the frustrations, I see some hope. Uh, I know a lot of things are evolving in CSS, things we really can use within the block editor and full site editing. So what do we do to handle this? You just go to a camp. WordPress, uh, WordCamp Europe was along the way. We bought the tickets. Nope, a friend of mine decided to get married and um, I really, really, yeah, um, much we couldn't resist. Um, so no WordCamp Europe. Instead, uh, the day we uh, found out we couldn't go to um, WordCamp Europe, we bought the tickets for CSS days. It's a quite expensive conference and I wanted to go to it for uh, four years but it always clashed with WordCamp Europe. So the weekend after we went to CSS days, two days only about CSS. And I was so invigorated when we came back. Um, I saw uh, all the, by the way, they have YouTube playlists. So all the talks are just on YouTube. Go and watch them, uh, take some popcorn, set yourself a weekend aside, go ahead. Um, when we came home, I saw the call for speakers was prolonged and I was like, okay, we need some CSS at, at the WordCamp. So we're going to talk with CSS. These are really fascinating times and I really think we can uh, use all the CSS love and attention uh, we need, uh, we can get. Okay, so <laughs> now I need to drink some water <laughs> and I haven't uh, put a glass already. Um, no, seriously. But
I really need to drink some. Um, so this was kind of intro runs. Things are really evolving and really evolving rapidly. Um, as I see it, but it's only a personal viewpoint, um, the death of Internet Explorer, Explorer 11 has something to do with it. Um, just, I mean, maybe a lot of you have already ditched internet support for Internet Explorer 11 like years ago. I couldn't uh, because some of my clients were like one, um, two years ago, they had still like 10% of their users coming from Internet Explorer 11. So the block editor in WordPress core couldn't dump Internet Explorer either. Last year in May, Finally, the official blog post, WordPress is going to drop support. Officially in June, only June this year, Internet Explorer is uh, proclaimed officially dead. So we now can use and can trust on things to work with Flexbox, uh, with Grid, uh, CSS firewalls, custom properties, Team JSON relies on it. So before, WordPress decided to drop Internet Explorer 11. There was no possibility to use Team JSON cross with cross-browser compatibility. Um, sorry. Um, okay, min-max and especially the clamp function, aspect ratio, object fit, scroll snap fun. Um, you see, uh, if you can see, all Internet Explorer having the red box not supported or an orange box in on the can I use data. Um, if you see now at MDNs, if you uh, look up a feature and you see the browser compatibility chart, there's no more red Internet Explorer 11. We can just go full throttle ahead. And then on top of it, like I think it was 2020, uh, MDN did a big uh, browser um, no, uh, developer uh, research. They asked, like, okay, what are really the pain points for you to do your job? As a result of the study, um, so they decided to do um, to work together, browsers, browser vendors working together. To, work, uh, to get cross-browser compatibility as high as possible for some focus key points. Since then, position sticky, aspect ratio, you can really use it, you can trust on it. Before, there was like, okay, one browser supports sticky in this way, the other browser supports sticky in another way. In 2022, like this year, we have the interop project. Even uh, browser vendors, again, working together on uh, a couple of focus areas, uh, quite a lot of focus areas, and they try to get all the test results for each focus area to 100% by the end of the year. If they succeed, this means that by the end of the year we can quite trustworthy use things like cascade la layers, containment, subgrid, things that will all be quite some fun. Uh, if you see it in context of full site editing and the block editor, things we might need to go the one step further. Um, if you want to know more about all the focus areas they're working on now and what the status is, um, check out the slides of uh, Brahmus. He gave a talk at Frontiers last week in Utrecht. Um, yeah, he was trying to. Um, list all of them and show some funky stuff. Um, he also did a talk about um, the cascade, the new cascade layer uh, at uh, CSS days. So check that one out as well. Um, but also, so things Internet Explorer did. Um, Things really happening in CSS, like usable stuff, browser compatible new features coming up quite soon are already ready for use. And in WordPress, WordPress is evolving rapidly as well. So um, Team JSON and Global Styles, like Global Styles, you can set a lot of um, yeah, choices like your font size and stuff um, through the admin if you're using a full site editing theme. 
But uh, in theme JSON, you can all see them or write them out as settings, and you can also use a theme JSON in your uh, classic PHP theme, if you like, as long as you use it in block editor, of course, because otherwise it's no use. Um, the theme JSON, if you work with that, you can already deploy it right now in any theme. Um, you can set the default custom properties you need. You can add all your own properties you like to use in your own extra CSS sauce for your theme. And as a really handy tool, you also control the editor UI via Team G JSON. Um, sorry, uh, Carolina Niemark, uh, she has a really good course on full site editing. Uh, just go and check out her lessons if you really want to know all of it and have some uh, good examples. So, I'm trying, let me check right now. Ooh, I'm going fast enough. Good. Any questions so far? <laughs> Time for another drink then. Um, so, I wanted to um, list out some more practical examples, like things uh, we're already using right now uh, within a blocked editor, things you might be using in the near future or on your next project. Um, I'll start off with a little bit more explanation about uh, Team JSON. Uh, who has used Team JSON before or has played with it? Just to have an idea. Okay. I have to admit, for me, it's a kind of new thing. Um, just started playing around with it, but it's uh, I was really quite enthusiastic. I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's really, really promising. Uh, it's much more than I had anticipated uh, before. Um, it's quite handy to work with as well. And I'm using it now in combination with my extra CSS sauce on top of it. And it works really well in combination because of the extended use of the custom properties. Like the CSS variables, I'll come back to them a little bit later. But you can just pass along um, all the values you want and need from the, um, the CSS that uh, WordPress will spit out um, yeah, through the settings of the... Uh, they will, WordPress will pass the theme JSON and will output all the properties as CSS. Um, but you can also reuse all the custom properties you defined here in your own custom theme. Because uh, beforehand, yeah, whenever I started a new project, I always started with, okay, defining all your settings. Before, um, custom properties maybe with sauce variables, now just custom properties in the root. Um, now that's just gone in my own uh, theme in my own CSS because it's, it's already there in, in the team JSON. So it's just another JSON file. It's just, it sits in the root of your team um, and it's just all properties and settings. And you can go nesting, you can define, you can define all the settings um, needed for your editor. So like at team support uh, color palette, you don't need it anymore in your PHP. You just define your color palette in uh, the team JSON. And the CSS is, is OK. Um, and also the UI of the editor uh, will be using it. Um, so all the uh, team supports are replaced now uh, with the team JSON. Maybe not all, I'm not sure, but a lot of them for sure. Um, um, so OK, well output, OK. Both in FSE and, and non-FSE teams, I think it's really kind of important because I was always um, thinking it's only useful within the real full site editing teams um, until someone pointed out, for, no, okay, you can use it in PHP themes as well or in more classic teams. Um, and it's only then I started to look into it because I must not, because having had the issues with the broken HTML before, I was a kind of um, not really enthusiastic to dive right into full site editing on production sites uh, right now. But this is a nice crossover. Um, sorry. So if you want to, um, yeah, I have no example of a whole theme, Jason, because it's kind of it's getting big. I think in the past slide um, at the links, I um, you have the way 
team of which Tabor, if I'm correct. Um, if you download that team and check out the team JSON over there, it's quite compact, it's very readable, and then you can start playing out with it. Um, so if it's the first test with team JSON, don't begin with a really huge one, just um, check out with the other full site editing editing sites, but maybe use one like Bay or the other team of which they were. Um, so, like here, you can, these are all the settings for the colors. You can say, okay, custom color picker? No, nope, I don't want it. They can't use it in the editor. You won't see the color picker. You can choose uh, background uh, color, text color, that's okay for me. Uh, default palette, it's are the uh, standard colors uh, Gutenberg has. Uh, nope, I don't want them. I don't want no gradients, no duotones, nothing of that sort. I will just have my own color palette and I start defining my colors. Like the same as you did in the uh, team support, PHP, you have a slug, you have a color code and you have the name you see in the editor. The UI in the editor is just this. You can see whatever they can do, but they can't set gradients, they can't set uh, uh, their own color picked colors. Um, if you allow all the color from, you just set everything to true and they have all the nitty gritty combined with your color pal palette, of course, uh, with your own palette added up. So you really control the UI through the team JSON um, because you could do it before, but it was with JavaScript filters and stuff, if I'm correct. Now it's just one place to control a lot of things. And all the, um, like the colors, you get all CSS variables. CSS variables, custom properties, it's the same thing. It's just a variable declared in the root or in the body of your CSS file, like really, on quite on a very high level. And then you can just use and reuse these properties, these variables somewhere else in your CSS. You can even overwrite them because it's, it's just, they follow the cascade as well, like a lot of other things. Um, because of the team JSON, you also get the uh, WP block styles generating all the needed color styles for your primary or secondary color, and there are you already using the um, custom properties set in the body tag uh, before. Um, but you can also use those properties yourself in your own code. One remark, why, why you use the important one? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, that was one thing. Because with, important thing, with the important tag, you can slash everything in the head. And I really, really don't like the important tag. And there were a lot of GitHub discussions about important. Um, how do you call it then? If you add important to the CSS? No, it should not be used. Quite correct. Um, but then I, this one, I maybe get it because yeah, if a user defines this color in the editor, whatever CSS you wrote, maybe you have to give them that color. But you get into trouble if you want to have a hover effect on a button and it has a secondary color with an important tag and you want to change the color on the hover, you can't, you have to use important the, too. The better me method is to extend your, your class like yeah. the div point, something like that. Yeah, then you start the specificity wars. Because, okay, you can um, take an element, an, an element, the order of your CSS. Um, if. Uh, yeah, ordering is better than this. <laughs> Everything is better than using important, yeah. I guess. So, important is like uh, smashing each other on the head. No, I'm more important, you're more important. No, I'm more, more important. I mean, it's endless. Especially if you want to uh, have maybe some fine uh, CSS transitions on hovers or maybe changing SVGs embedded in your blog buttons or whatever, this is really a pain in the ass. Um, so it is what Gutenberg uh, prints out right now. I don't think it's fun, but there are, were more importance that are already gone. So this is kind of the thing. Ali. 
what we're working it right now. Okay, here is a, a link to the Rich Tabor theme. Also, Carolina's course for every information and especially the docs for the um, team JSON thing. Then you, you can see in the docs whatever settings you can define. Um, uh, is like, uh, is a user allowed to add uh, custom padding for a block, for example? You can set it through team JSON. You can set it per block, you can set it on a general level. Um, some things I feel are still in the works. It's transitioning, um, but then the promise is really, uh, really good. So, um, but check out whatever things you can uh, s define using the team JSON. You get a long way, actually, um, customizing your editor experience. So the custom properties. Our editor can I use uh, right on top for the next slides? Um, it's used extensively in Team JSON, as we saw. Um, you can add your own custom properties to T Team JSON too, and they will be outputted as well. And you can reuse the core and custom properties in any extra CSS you need. Like for example, I wanted to have um, setting. Um, yeah, I wanted to have some sizes for my gaps like to control the spacing throughout my theme, the default block spacings users get out of the box. Um, so I defined some custom gaps and they will be outputted like, um, okay, dash dash gap, dash dash tiny. And I can use them wherever I want. I can also for the typography, I wanted to add some line height uh, settings as well. And I get them as well in the base of my, my CSS. Um, to be used wherever I need them in a later point on my team. You can also reuse them or um, play along. I mean, WordPress does something like every important text um, has primary color, a color uh, dash, no, colon, um, preset color primary. I thought it was sometimes if you want to play with hovers and you don't want all clients I mean, I are you able to set a hover color right now on button blocks? I don't think so. So maybe you, what? In Team JSON, you can already do that with the latest Gutenberg. Okay, but then you, not in core yet, but it is in Gutenberg? Yes. All right, cool. Because setting hover colors on links, on buttons, it's also really tedious stuff. So for now, I was like, okay, uh, WordPress also always have the different color variables, but actually I want to do something with the current color of that button, and I want to swap it to background or whatever. So I just declare my own custom properties on the level of has primary color, my current color becomes the WordPress custom property and in my hover um, CSS, I can just use, okay, so the text color becomes the background color and I take, yeah, I also with an important, of course, I am white uh, for the text color. Okay, accessibility wise, we come back to it later. I am more important because I have to get over the text color set in Gutenberg. But whatever, you can play along with it, you can inherit, you can also calculate with the custom properties. You can use a calc function with it. I needed um, like this tiny little thingy a designer provided um, on a preview block. Okay, nice, it's an SVG with two circles in them, both have a different color. I use uh, in, um, I use like SVG definition list sprites uh, in my code. Um, but then, yeah, okay, it has that to have a hover animation, so they have to change color. I always use current color as a fill color in my SVG codes, but then now I have two colors, and I only in CSS, I can only use one current color. But it's one SVG. I just say, okay, the, the one circle has a fill with this CSS property, as yeah, the, the custom property. The other one has another one, and in my CSS, I just uh, set them. Like, okay, normally, these variables have the value of the color primary and color secondary. If the preview block is in a hover state, uh, okay, the, the values of my custom properties, they change and I get the animation 
with only one SVG in one thing. Okay, clamp. As we saw with the death of I-11, we can all use clamp. We can use it for fluid typography, or also for fluid grids in the future, fluid gaps, whatever you want. You uh, clamps, Clamp takes, um, you have three values. So you have the minimum size, you have the maximum size, and in the middle you have you're trying to get a viewport with related size, the browser will try to clamp onto between those min and maximum uh, values. So um, this is just one set of CSS. I don't use any media, qu media queries to change the font size. I just use a uh, clamp in my font size definition. Um, you don't have to calculate it yourself, like the, the mid thingy. It's no fun, but you have tools online to help you out with it. In Team JSON, you can just write it out. Okay, you can discuss fun. Do we still need a fallback for real cross browser stuff? Or is it okay to just use it this way? But this will work. Um, in your Team JSON, I have defined my font sizes using the clamp. In my editor, I just get the names of my font sizes. Um, I get everything printed out uh, in my CSS and I just it just works without having to change anything for all of different levels. I mean, this one is coming soon. Sorry, switching to color contrast. Like I said, the hovers on the button. Okay, if I change the background color to the current color or the regular text color, but how do I know I still have enough contrast for my text if, my, if I put my text white? Because maybe they had chosen a yellow text color on a, a whatever, a black background. My code from before, it won't be very readable if I have the yellow background with the white text on a button link. But maybe in the future, wouldn't it be nice if you can do just something like this? then maybe the hover thingy is a bit of soft or, okay, if users can, maybe in the future they can choose their own hover colors, but then we might be using something like this as a def default, as a fallback. If it's already in Team JSON, I suppose you can always write this one, color contrast, in Team JSON as well. Because as I understood, in your Team JSON, you can use any valid custom prop, uh, any valid CSS you like. You can just drop it in there as a value. So you can't use it right now, not yet, but it was in interrupts 22. So officially, normally, we might be able to use it by the end of the year or the beginning or next year. Uh, so we have the background color. I'm using the current color, my former text color for it. <coughs> and I, as the te new text color, I want something that, okay, this is my background color. And I have a list of other colors, like white, black, maybe the primary color. And I want one, okay, browser, go and choose me a text color that has the highest contrast ratio um, to this background color. Okay, fixed one line. And it will cater most of the things. It might be a good default. And then if you like to fine tune some more, you're always uh, able to. Uh, color mix might be a fun thing to use, also coming soon, <coughs> ish. Um, maybe have some color palettes with all hues in it, might be nice. Um, and, the, and you can also use, uh, so you ask the browser in a color space to mix two colors and you can also set a percentage of how much of one color a browser sh should use for the end result. It's quite some fun. You can also, of course, of course, you can use custom properties within. Um, so you only have to define your primary color hex code once, and all the other tints might be um, calculated upon them. Um, might become something like this, because whenever it gets to be valid CSS, cross browser, we can just um, add a color, things like that. I think my time, how am I? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, 
there are a couple of things. Okay, I won't get too deep it in, but container queries, it's like some kind of media queries, but then you decide on things changing based on the width of the browser window. But maybe if we want to use something in the footer full width, but whenever um, I want this thing to be in the sidebar, for example, yeah, my viewport is still that large, that big. So I get something like, okay, these are all the default thing. I get something like this. It's no fun because it's like, okay, I won't put the columns underneath each other because the viewport is so wide. It's wide enough. But with container queries, you could define a container like the sidebars. You can say, and you can, yeah, it's really exact same syntax, nearly the same syntax as media queries. Um, and you might be getting this without having to change anything around it. Um, scroll snap fun, I wanted to add it. You can really use this right now. Um, go and check some really fun stuff um, that Adam Argyles has demoed. Yes, CSS days, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, the demo at the Netlify app, you can play around with all the different things. Actually, you, if you play around with it, you'll see we really needed it to create app-like thingies, like so swipe to the right, to delete, or uh, pull to refresh. Feels really, really native. Um, just CSS, no JavaScript needed. You can use it in combination with intersection observer, little bit of JavaScript to have really nice page flows. Subgrid, nested blocks, groups, blocks, align white, align full problems. I saw um, WordPress kind of uh, good threw them out for the nested blocks, but maybe we can still use full width or a, a white width for nested blocks too. But then we would need something like this. Maybe end of the year, beginning next year, keep an eye on it. Uh, it will really change some things. And this one, I really, sorry if I'm out of time, but really wanted to show this one uh, at layer. It's not full browser compatible yet. But when it's compatible, I really, really hope it will solve all of the important stuff. Because then you can just put all CSS in different layers within one style sheet, within, throughout the website. Um, CSS, the browser will just go like, okay, the first layer they encounter um, has the lowest priority, and it adds up like we're used from CSS, it's most of the time the same principle. But then you could do something like, okay, block styles, you go first. But my team namespace, my team styles, they go after, so they have a higher priority. We don't need important anymore because, but then we can still, if it's, um, oh, sorry. If the block editor has something like, okay, but we really need important styles for something because the user is, is king, of course, they can add another one and make sure it's always in queued last. Um, but then if I really, really know what I'm doing, I could still trish it out. I don't know if it's a good idea, whatever, but I think it is meant to solve a lot of the important uh, issues and we had a few the past uh, year. So I think this one would be a fun thing as well. Um, so I think a lot is happening, uh, a lot of stuff that can be really fun right now, but also in the near future or in the near, um, if, or how Gutenberg and um, full site editing will evolve. So that's why I wanted to talk about uh, CSS. Thank you and fine end of the day. <laughs>